today I'm going to show you how to deploy a speech recognition engine in Kubernetes. So if you want to deploy uh, any uh, speech recognition model or um, any microservice in Kubernetes, first thing we have to do is to build a microservice. So in our case, we want to build a speech recognition model and we want to send request to a speech recognition model and the request will be in terms of in the form of audio. We send the audio and we have to get back the transcript. So for this, first we have to build a speech recognition model. So speech recognition model building is actually a machine learning task and we have to train a speech recognition model or you can just take any open source model uh, and you have, to be able to be, uh, you have to be able to send request or uh, write some inference script and the inference script should be able to read audio and generate a transcript for you. And right after that, what we should do is we should create a web service. We are going to use Flask here. So using Flask, we create a web service and the web service will, uh, we can use the web service to communicate to our speech recognition model and get the results from the speech recognition model. Once we have the web service, then the next step is to containerize that application. Um, this is done using Docker. In this in our case uh, what we are going to do is we are going to build a docker file and we are going to build the docker and then we have to push that docker to some uh, registry such as docker hub or ecr uh, docker registry and when, when once we have the docker uh, images in the docker registries then we can create a kubernetes cluster and write a kubernetes yaml files uh, uh, to um, deploy all these containers so Kubernetes is actually a container orchestration platform. Uh, what it does is it, it manages uh, the containers um, uh, in, in such a way that it takes care of handling the load, or scaling up the servers, and so on. So in our case, what we're going to do is we're going to create a Kubernetes cluster in AWS, and then we'll use the Docker, which we have created in this, in this step, and then use the Docker and then um, create um, uh, uh, create a deployment uh, in the Kubernetes cluster. And then using the load balancer, we will see how to upload any audio from anywhere and then generate the transcript. So let's implement these four tasks step by step. First step is to build a speech recognition model. So in this case, what I am going to do is I'm going to use an open source, pre-trained uh, open source uh, speech recognition model. So basically, speech recognition, like I said, it's a machine learning um, task. And if you want to build your own custom speech recognition model, you have to have experience in uh, building speech recognition algorithms. But if you don't know it, no worries. You can simply use an open source model from Hugging Face because they provide Wave to Vec and a few other uh, speech recognition models, pre-trained models. And you can simply download them and then run inference on those models. So let's start uh, building an inference script. So note that we are not actually building a full-fledged speech recognition pipeline here. So basically we don't have any training uh, methods or training uh, codes here. We are just going to use any uh, on open source models, uh, which is from Hugging Face. And then we are going to download the model and then we'll just run um, the uh, inference using those models. So let's start coding um, the inference script now. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, uh, so first thing first, we have to first uh, in install these four packages, uh, Flask, Soundfile, um, um, Transformers, and PyTorch, right? It's these four. So note that I'm not using any GPU version of PyTorch here because this inference uh, from the Transformers, you can run it on CPU. So let's start uh, writing the code and see how we can uh, build or how we can query a pre-trained speech recognition model, right? So from transformers, I'm going to import wave to vec something called wave to vec uh, two for, um, for CTC. This is one specific wave to vec model uh, from, um, from Ging face. And we also have to, uh, this is just a model, the wave to vec two for CTC is a model. We also need to have a preprocessor. So preprocessor is going to take care of 
um, uh, running the feature extraction and the tokenization or something called uh, decoding in order to get the output right after the CTC layer. We're also going to import Torch. Uh, just uh, we are going to use it later. Then uh, we are going to use NumPy. Uh, we are going to impi import uh, uh, import NumPy as NP. And then we are going to create a class. Let's call it ASR inference. And we are going to initialize this class. And this class, all it takes is the model name. With the model name is actually something uh, uh, something from um, a, a King Face uh, library. So the model name it depends on what models you are using. So in my case, I'm going to use a model called Patrick uh, One Platon, and then the wave to wave base hundred hour with LM. So this model is actually from Hugging um, Face, and it's actually a fine-tuned uh, model. Uh, so basically, wave to wake is a self-supervised model. You can say you simply take a few amount of few uh, few hours of um, audio data, labeled audio data, just fine-tune the model, and then you'll get a speech function model. So in this case, they have fine-tuned this wave to wake base model with 100 hours of audio, and then uh, so that that's the speech recognition model we are going to use. So then we are going to create a few attributes now for um, so we are going to call the model, and we are going to use this CTC class, and then we use uh, a method called from pre-trained. So this from pre-trained is going to download uh, the specific, the specified model. So this model name is uh, the model name is uh, the variable model name. In similar way, we also create an attribute for processor, which is which comes from wave to wave processor. And the same case, we can use from pre-trained and model name. Now these two are the uh, only thing we need. Uh, in the initialization, we are just initializing the model, loading the model. Basically, when we create, uh, when we instantiate this class, it's going to load the model and the processor. The main function we want to write is the inference script, right? And the inference script is going to take audio, which is sequence of array, or uh, it's an array, uh, it's a one-dimensional array uh, from NumPy, which we are going to get once we read the audio WAV file or WAV file or MP3 file and uh, that is the audio variable here and the inputs is going to be um, uh, we have to like uh, we get the numpy array but we have to get that tensor uh, tensor uh, tensor or the matrix uh, to feed into a model so for that what we are going to do is we are going to use this processor function and then we are going to write uh, we are going to say okay my sampling rate my audio is this my uh, sampling uh, rate is is equal to 16 kilohertz because we, the model which they are uh, provided works only for 16 kilohertz audio and i'm going to say return tensors is equal to pt because we are using pytorch here right so this is go going to give us the input torch matrix and then we are going to what we are going to do is we are going to say uh, with no grad because we are not doing any training here we are going to get the logits which is basically the probabilities ctc probabilities right so for that, you can say, okay, I'm going to take this tensor matrix and then I'm going to call the model and note that the output we get from this variable inputs here. So the inputs variable is basically a dictionary. So we are going to use star star to, um, to feed all the inputs in the form of keyword arguments, right? So, so we're going to say inputs, starts are inputs. And also what we have to do is we are going to get the logits uh, after calling this, we don't want any other output. So because the the output, I mean, once you call the model, it's going to return a few other uh, uh, irrelevant things also, something like hidden hidden states and so on, which we don't want. Then we are going to say predicted IDs. So this is the this is a prediction. The logit is basically the probability matrix. I'm going to say argmax on this logits, and then I'm going to uh, run the argmax on a dimension minus one because that's the dimension which will contain the class. That is the dimension. Uh, the, 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 the last dimension is the class dimension, right? And now, once we have the predicted IDs, which is basically a sequence of numbers, we, are, we want to get the text. We are going to use the processor um, processor here, and then we are going to say, processor, please decode this uh, predicted IDs, and we are going to use only the first uh, vector because it's going to create a batch. We are going to use the first one because we are only feeding the 
first we are only feeding one audio here and we are going to convert all the outputs to lower letter and then we are going to return the text right that's it now that's all uh, there is for this uh, model so like i said you just create the class and then initialize all the models and then you have the inference function and then um, call the audio so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to write a, a simple test function right if name is equal to uh, main uh, what i'm trying to do is i'm going to test this code and i'm just going to feed some audio and try to see like what is the output will be so first what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a asr variable which is uh, so asr uh, instance which is basically the instance of this asr inference class right so and it doesn't take anything it takes model name but we are not going to pass it because we already have it as a as a default argument here right then what i'm going to do is i'm going to create an array not torch it's a um, np dot random dot rand of some dimension let's say um, uh, 16000 which is equal to one second worth of audio right and then i'm going to say asr dot inference uh, audio right uh, that will be the text and we are going to print our text i want that so this is the uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run the Python uh, the script so as our inference. Let's see what happens. So basically the model uh, the code should do, should download the model. So once it downloads the model, it has to load this class. And once it loads, then we should be able to run the inference. So, okay, we are getting some error. So uh, I think this syntax is wrong. Let's try. Okay, let me just make sure. Import. NP. NP dot random. It's NP dot rand dot random. Okay, I think I made a syntax mistake here. So it should be random dot rand and there should not be any, uh, any list it should pass okay now we are good to go uh, let me just run it right away here uh, in this um, in this ipython console let's see what happens so hopefully if we have done everything correctly then it should be able to generate some random uh, text so uh, there is a mistake here it should be inference so not for a okay let's try now okay now we have something some text which is probably empty because it's random noise right so my computer is a little slow today um, sorry about that okay all right now uh, now we have uh, the um, ASR model ready right we don't we don't have to have this you can just delete this it's just a test right so now we have our asr model ready now uh, the first step is uh, first step in this in this four um, steps are no, uh, in this first uh, the first step is finished right so we have the speech recognition model ready now we are going to go to the flask web service and then we will start implementing the flask web service so we are going to create a file called app.py and this app.py will be our flask web service so how are we going to do it so it's very simple so basically we have space speech recognition uh, model so all we have to create all we have to do is this wrap this um, speech recognition model around the flask uh, web service right so from flask so I, I have already installed a flask so i'm going to import uh, flask and i'm also going to import something very important render template this is going to create a uh, this is going to render an HTML web page or HTML file uh, in uh, so that we can see some sort of a UI uh, in the web browser. Because when we want to do, if you want to do speech recognition, we have we have to create, we have to have some kind of uh, UI to upload our audio and then uh, get the transcript. Basically, we have to have some kind of visualization, right? How that's happening. So that for that we have I have uh, templates 
and static folders uh, basically contains HTML and CSS code. This code I just took it off, uh, took it directly from internet. I'm going to give a link to the, uh, the, the place where I got the code. So I have these two codes, uh, HTML and CSS code to load uh, the uh, template for the web page where you can upload the audio and get the transcript. So, so assume you have those two and uh, we are going to use the render template to render the HTML file, right? Again, uh, we're going to import uh, from Flask import request because the request is important to send the request. Uh, import request. Now, uh, now this is about the Flask. Now we have to import our inference script. So from ASR um, inference, we are going to import our ASR inference class, right? So, and also we need to uh, import something called sound file, which is basically a sound library. Uh, this will use it to load uh, all the audio, uh, load the audio and then uh, basically read the audio and then um, do some, I mean, send this audio to the uh, ASR inference script. So uh, this is done. Now we'll create an app, which is basically a Flask app. It's, it's called Flask. And then we'll just say name because it's running in this code. And then we have to provide something called template folder. So the template folder will point to, will, learn, will understand from which folder it has to uh, read the templates. So we have this folder called templates and we are going to give that as the folder path. Okay, now I will create the ASR class, ASR inference, and we won't pass anything because it's already taking a default model. Now we are going to create an index uh, function and we'll say if text is equal to empty initially uh, so we'll come back to the um, route um, decorated later but uh, just so you know the initially the text is stiff, uh, text is empty if there is a request um, dot method if it is equal to equal to post method right what we are going to do is I, I mean it is if it is a post method and if there is a file in it right if the file is not there in it, so let's give that. Tip. If the file is not in request.files, request.files, right? We are going to just redirect, right? Return redirect of request dot URL, right? And file is equal to requests dot files files of file okay that's the first condition if file dot um, file name is equal to empty uh, there is no in this empty file then we again have to redirect right we'll just say return redirect of request dot url now, if there is file, if there is no file, means empty file will redirect it. If there is file, then we have to perform this operation. We are going to load this f dot read of file. We are reading the audio file. Then we are going to get the text from asr dot inference, inference, and then is audio. Then once we have the text, we are going to go back and say return render template of there is a template uh, the HTML pay file called upload.html in our folder and then we are going to say for uh, text is equal to text right so this is the index function we have to route we have to create a decorator called app.route this is from the flask uh, API the flask um, uh, repo um, and we have to say methods is equal to a load is post and get so these two are the allowed methods okay now we are good to go so we have our app uh, flask app uh, ready now we are going to create or run the web service um, in here in the script itself so we are going to say app dot run and we say debug equal to true you can keep it as false you don't have to send host is going to run at 
0.0.0.0 and we have to mention the port so let's keep the port is equal to 8000 you can keep any port you want so that is it so now let's just run our app and see if you are able to access the ui right so we'll just say python uh, flask sorry not plus app dot now what the model what the code is going to do is it's going to uh, do the same steps which i have written here so it's going to load the model sr model for that it has to download the model if it is already existed in the in the um, in the in the base it's going to keep it so um, okay something wrong here so app dot route and methods it's not a methods half it should be methods equal to okay save and then run so let's see if we are able to access our web page or not so uh, okay it seems like it is running now once it is started it starts running i'm going to access the uh, okay it's showing it's all it's uh, showing it's, it's it is already and go here so now, as you can see, we have our a speech recognition app running in our local browser. It's, we are still not in the cloud. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a choose file. Then I'm going to click on some audio file, which I have in our in my local folder. Then I'm going to click on transcribe. When I click on transcribe, it has to run the speech recognition model and return the results. So this is the results uh, in being compared to model. So this is basically the app, Flask app. So far, so good. So we have our Flask app running. We have our speech recognition model running. Now it's a time to create the Docker. So, uh, okay, I don't know why this page came. So let's just close it, right? So, uh, so let's just close the app. I mean, we don't need this. We can just close the app. Okay, now the app is stopped. Now let's go on to create the Docker file. So we have to i mean you can create docker manually if you want but that's not the recommended way let's create a docker file and then we'll build the docker using that docker file so save the code close it or let's keep it open then we'll open the docker file okay so if you are not uh, familiar with docker i recommend you uh, go through some tutorial about what docker is and how it works what are the commands and how to build it how to push it and how to basically use it right so in our case what we are going to do is we're going to create a docker file and then we're going to build the docker file sorry we're going to build the docker image using the docker file once we have the image we are going to push that image to docker hub you can use any other registry if you want you can use uh, ecr registry you can use google google's um, uh, container registry whichever you want but in our case we are going to use docker hub it's because it's free for all the images if you want to host them in public right all right so now uh, we have to create the docker so we are going to start creating uh, the docker file first command we have to use is basically the base image so i'm going to use the base image which is ubuntu 18.04 this is basically uh, you can think of it as os right ubuntu os it's not really os it's a very small version of the os it will have the only the basic important things and then what we are going to do is we are going to create layers um, uh, on top of this Ubuntu image and we are going to build all those layers and at the end of the Docker file you will you will run the Flask app which is just created and that will be able to listen to the, the ports if you want to, right? So let's just save it. So we have, we have the base image. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some commands because this is the fresh, fresh uh, Ubuntu OS. So we have to run some uh, commands and updates. So you have to, you can just run uh, applicate update minus y is basically it says yes to all the all the questions it asks because you, you might have seen Ubuntu when you run something it should update something it asks yes or no. So if you mention y here you don't have to manually mention it. All right. So that is the first update. Uh, first uh, command you can run the OS command or the Linux command. So second command I want to run is I'm going to install important things, some of the important things which are basically the Python and the pip and the sound files library and so on these are os level commands or os level uh, installations you have to do so uh, so i'm going to again run an update you don't have to because you already ran it and i'm going to say 
and apt get install minus y python equal to python 3.8 so basically this is the python version i'm using so and also we need python pip sorry python 3 pip because we have python 3 right and we have to have um, a library called sorry, a library called lib sound file so we need apt get install minus y we have to use lib snd just so you know it's a lib sound file one so this is a sound file library uh, we need for the sound file python package to operate so if you don't have this then we won't be able to read any file um, in python using the sound file library okay so we have all the os level setup uh, sorry about that we are here so we have all the os level setup then we have to just uh, do copy all the codes into our container right or the image right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy all the um so this is not a command this is just a comment so we're going to copy all the codes codes or files right so we're going to use the command called copy it's a docker command and we're going to con com copy all the files which are in this current directory to a folder called app right and we are going to make that directory work directory uh, switch to app work directory right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the command called work dir which is basically the the switching to work directory command i want to switch it to app folder right and once you have that now we'll next the time to install all the python packages right python packages so for python packages what i'm going to do is i can simply run pip command right so run will run all the commands uh, it's like running all the commands in terminal so i'm going to say pip3 install and i have all the requirements in my requirement dot file requirements dot txt file right i want to install this now once i have that i can create an entry point um let's just say in the command uh, entry point so i'm going to use the entry point um uh, command entry point command from docker i'm going to this that takes sort of a list so it has to be python 3 right because we want to run the app not run now we'll just run the app so we'll say we have to run, run it as a command right so we say app dot pi so this is all the uh, docker is right so once you have all of this then we have our docker uh, we can build our docker right so how are we going to do that we can build the docker using the docker build command docker build minus t so minus t is going to tag the image right so what i can do is i can say um, so um, i can say docker minus t uh, some name let's say asr uh, demo right uh, and you can also give some uh, tag if you want right i'm just going to say asr demo and then i'm going to say dot to build it from the current folder so uh, what is happening is the the docker is building all over um, uh, the uh, building the image right using this docker file it is executing all these layers and then stacking those layer on top of each other and then once it's done building so basically it has to download a lot of things because it has to download the os it has to download torch torch itself is as you can see it's 700 mb right so uh, it just it has to do a lot of things so um, so one important thing is you have to have your docker running all the time if you don't have the docker running then you can't do anything so uh, make sure you have your docker installed if you are using mac you can use the docker desktop if you are using uh, linux then there are commands which you can uh, run to get the docker so this, my system has become really really slow i think it's because there are too many things running uh, right now uh, now that we have our docker um, containerized application uh, the image in our local we can simply push the docker to uh, some uh, repository such as docker hub or uh, ecr right so um, so just so you know i did push the docker myself so once the docker is built 
and then you can simply uh, push the docker and the docker will go to docker hub and this is how the uh, the docker hub looks like so this is the docker hub here i have my uh, image which is uh, called deploy speech uh, krishna dn slash deploy speech krishna dn is basically my the docker handle so that handle uh, the, basically the username kind of a thing and deploy speech is the name of the image right now if anybody wants to use this image they can simply use this and then they should be able to get this image uh, to their uh, to their local or if they are fusing in some other place so if you also want to use it you can, you can filter it and uh, use it right so this is all good i mean uh, we are almost uh, done with three steps right we created the ec2 uh, we created the uh, speech recognition application we created flask web service now we have created the um, we have containerized our application now the next step is to create or deploy the kubernetes application itself now if you want to deploy kubernetes which means you have to have some kubernetes experience right so make sure you have kubectl commands um, like understand kubectl commands and know some of them just to just so you know how to um, run those commands in the cluster uh, right so make sure you understand pods definitions of pods service and then load balancers node port and deployments right those are a few things you have to understand before jumping into this co or jumping into this uh, lecture if you don't know them it's a bit difficult to uh, understand or follow but just so you just you can read those those things uh, somewhere or you can just take a simple crash course on kubernetes okay so now uh, we have to go and create a kubernetes cluster so i'm not going to create the cluster right now right in the live because it is going to take a lot of time just to create a cluster it's going to take 20 30 minutes to get the cluster to prepare the cluster itself so you can install the cluster and run i mean and deploy the cluster but it's going to take some time to uh, create the cluster the cluster creation process is going to take some time so because of that what i have done what i have done is i have just gone ahead and created the cluster already which is basically a two node cluster um, and uh, each node is a simple uh, tx large instances uh, running and uh, the uh, what i have done is i have created a boost, bootstrap image here so basically sorry bootstrap a server here so the bootstrap server is going to uh, uh, it's a bootstrap server is going to um, install all the important uh, things so important things are basically the aws configure and then uh, eks cuttle and then kube cuttle commands so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to interact with our cluster in a bootstrap server which is a simple uh, macro uh, t2 micro uh, instance right so first thing first you go and install uh, so first and first you go and spin up your ec2 uh, image which you can call it a bootstrap image and then go there and run all these things right so first install your kube cuttle then you install your eks cuttle then you install your aws configure and then only you can go and create a cluster make sure once you um, before you create this cluster you have to add some roles iam roles in your cluster right so if you go to how to if you go to aws um, documentation on how to install a kubernetes or how to create a kubernetes cluster and install uh, eks cuttle then it'll tell you like what are the iam permissions your policies you need to add um, in order to create a cluster uh, so that you can access it from uh, something like this bootstrap server so i uh, have this bootstrap server ready now i can run my kubectl git nodes command it shows me all the nodes so it says i have two nodes uh, both are uh, both are nodes so basically worker nodes right and uh, we don't we don't see the master nodes here in case of um, if you install using eks cuttle but it's so it's i mean we, we it's fine because everything else is taken care of by um, elastic um, uh, um, basically the eks elastic Co kubernetes server service so from amazon right so i have nodes now i'll check if i have any pods running so i'll say get pods so it seems like there is no pods if, even though i mean you can simply run get all it shows all the all the things which are running these are like something with the kubernetes related but right now we don't have any uh, pods we don't have any uh, deployments right we don't have any deployment and we don't have um, any service so we don't have any of those so our job is to go and create all of this ourselves right so um, good so 
good thing is right now uh, once we created a cluster now using kubectl we can interact with our cluster so basically we can run or we can talk to the cluster and say hey hey here is the job you run it or here is the yaml file uh, please use this manifest file and create so many pods or instantiate so many pods create this service and create load balancer <coughs> excuse me and so on so this is the idea of this is the, um, uh, the this is the reason why we have to use kubectl so in order to talk to our um, cluster right okay so now that we have our docker now that we have our cluster now it's just a matter of time uh, uh, we go and create a pod manifest or a deployment manifest to run our uh, kubernetes uh, deployment or deploy our kubernetes application or the speech application in the kubernetes what i'm going to do is i'm going to create kubernetes uh, gates uh, deploy um deployment something like this dot yaml this is going to uh, create a simple yaml file and here is when is it, here is over here i'm going to add all the kubernetes uh sorry, all the manifest uh, manifest definitions and all the things related to like how do we how do we create or how do we um, create a pod or what is the type of um deployment uh, sorry not really deployment um what is the name of our deployment and uh, how many replicas we want all those things right so uh, let's start with the api version right so basically this api version is um, apps usually apps.v1 right so then we have to use the kind so in our case we can use kind as pod or service or uh, deployment so we are going to use deployment because it's easy to connect a server sorry service to it so that we can talk to uh, we can use, we can create the service using a load balancer and then we can just simply access the load balancer link and then uh, run all our application sorry run all our uh, access our service basically so we have the kind then we have to have some metadata if you want so for metadata we are going to use the name um, as an asr deployment right asr deployment and for sorry it is yes, capital letter i don't know why anyway so then we are going to use the labels so for labels you can have multiple labels so you can uh, create something like app which is uh, the label should be some kind of a key value pair so for AS, okay, asr system something like this right so we have our uh, app and then um, we we are done with the first part so now we have to go and create something called spec so spec is going to be something like we'll mention a number of replicas we'll just say two we can mention three or four or five or whatever depending on your application and for selector uh, we have to say okay match labels because match labels are uh, is what the the kubernetes is going to use when we create our service it's going to match those labels and assign the specific traffic uh, assign the specific service to a specific pod so the pod definition and this match labels should have the same thing right so we'll say app is asr system so let's just use asr system the label as yes so that we don't make any mistake so then we have the pod template here so this template is similar to the pod template if you see right so template we have a metadata first and for metadata we have labels similar to the above one deployment and we can mention it as app is equal to asr system okay one part is done after metadata we have to have spec again just like the deploy for the deployment to have the deployment kind we had so for spec you have to here is what the real deal is uh, so we have to mention the containers and for containers sorry containers and then for the containers we have to say uh, name of the container which is basically krishna dn like i showed you uh, deploy speech right and latest so this is the docker hub name right and we need to have um, okay we have to make sure the tabs are properly taken care if you mess this up then it won't work so that is the image sorry this is not the name this is the image this is the image and for name you can keep anything so you can say as yes, our system itself doesn't matter right 
So, okay, so we have the image. Next important thing is the ports. So what kind of ports we want? So we have in our uh, system container uh, ports. So the container port, we are exposing our application at uh, port number uh, 8000, so I have to mention 8000 here. So if we mismatch, if we make a mistake here, then gone, we won't be able to access our ports at all. So you have to make sure whatever port you are running your application, that more port matches this port. So we have a container port, which is of 8000, and then we have all our, uh, all, all the other things, right? So not sure if I'm making a mistake here. Okay. All right, so let's make sure the YAML file is correct. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this code. This is all I'm writing in local, right? So I'm going to go to my uh, EC2 instance. I'm going to write git deployment dot yaml because i need to run this run the kubernetes um, commands from here so i'm just copying it here so now comes the important crucial things kubectl so before running kubectl okay let's run kubectl kubectl minus uh, sorry create minus f gates deployment so if i run this so it should be able to create a deployment so now the deployment is created now let's just check if our deployment is uh, if our deployment has created any parts, we'll just say get parts, kubectl get parts. So it is creating the uh, uh, the containers. Uh, so it is still creating the parts. So it's spinning up the parts. You can see what's happening uh, in this, right? We can use the describe command, and we can say describe this part for me. So this is going to uh, this is going to show us what are the steps <coughs> to read the data. So here is what is happening. So it's scheduled and pulling the image basically it's pulling from my docker hub uh, repo and then it is basically the creating the uh, creating the pod right so kubectl get pods it's still creating i think right still creating then you can also check kubectl get deployment and kubectl get deployment is again one of the deployments so we need two replicas we have to have like two deployment because we have two nodes and uh, now we can also see get replica sets. So there are two replica sets, right? All right, so now let the uh, Kubernetes create, create our parts and take care of all the creating the replicas and deployment and everything. Meanwhile, we have to create something called service. So let's go and create the service. So let's write it as service.yaml file. So let's open it here. Okay, so we have our service.yaml file. So basically, the service YAML file is important in order to um, con in order to communicate with our app, our web app we have created. So basically, we have our uh, web service running at port 8000, and we have to uh, able we have to be able to access that particular uh, web service. So in order to do that, we have to use the service definitions, and we have to mention what kind of ports, uh, where which uh, ports uh, are the services running. And we have to map those ports to our local, um, I mean, our, our open ports, uh, like such as load balancer or node port um, to see or to access the application. So this, so all the things I am telling you may sound like, um, sound like very high level stuff, which you, if you don't know Kubernetes, but uh, if you read Kubernetes, this is all very easy, right? So all the things I'm saying, like service, the deployment and the parts, load balancer, all of these things will, be, will become clear if you know what Kubernetes is, right? So that's why I suggest you go and read a little bit about Kubernetes, like if, if not like in depth, just read a little bit. I can suggest some books also. Um, uh, there are like really, really good books. Uh, there's a book called Kubernetes Bible. It's an amazing book. It's a, it's a really, really good book. So you can buy that book and read if you want to understand in depth what Kubernetes does under the hood. So, so all those things you can understand. So um, let's just check if our uh, parts are running or not. One more time, I think they will be running because it shouldn't take much time. Uh, there we go. So we have our parts running already, right? So now it's a time. Uh, now I mean we have the part, but we don't know how to talk to the or talk to these parts, right? We don't know how to. We have our web web service running in these parts, but we don't know how to access them. So that is the reason we have to create this service uh, YAML file. So let's create uh, the service YAML file and see how to communicate with the, the parts, right? 
So for service API uh, version uh, is again um, v1. Now the kind is obviously service instead of powered or deployment, right? And then the metadata uh, for metadata we'll just use the name, right? Name is ASR service. Basically the name of the service. We'll just say ASR service. Okay, metadata is done. Now we'll go to the spec. So in spec, we have to mention the type of the service. So basically we can use different types. So there is a cluster IP, there is node port, and there's something called load balancer. We are going to use load balancer, right? So you have the load balancer. So I'll show you what load balancer is in, 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 in a minute uh, in, in uh, AWS. And that load balancer is what is going to give us the, the front end or the, the communication port for us in order to talk to all our or in order to uh, use the services which we have created. So the type is <coughs> load balancer, and we have to use the selector. So as we as you, as we created in the previous, um, as we saw in the previous um, uh, ML file, we had created a match labels. So there we mentioned uh, CSR system. So that label should be same as this. And then we have to mention the ports. Um, so for ports, so, so we'll say a name, so we'll just say name. name is ASR port, port name port, uh, port of, uh, name of the port, uh, we'll just say port, right? And then the port we want to run is in 80. So uh, and basically the port where we access our load balancer, you can keep it as deep, uh, uh, port 80. And the target port is our 8080, sorry, 8000 port, which we are currently running our application on. Right. So that is all about uh, the. That is all about the. Um, let's make sure we have our indentation correct. So this is all about the service. Now once you have this, you just take the code, go to our Bootstrap instance, win service dot. Yeah, file right. And then say just copy it, and then write it. Now same case we have to apply minus sorry create capital create minus f then we have to use our service so this is going to create a service now we can see if our service is created get service right okay so we have a service here of type load balancer now let's go and understand what actually load balancer is so this is our uh, aws account right so we have our aws account we have a bootstrap instance running we have our uh, node, right? So we have our um, uh, node one, node two, right? So if you scroll down, you will see something called auto scaling group here. This is something which Kubernetes um, EKS does automatically. So we want to scale up your uh, servers. Uh, if they get any, let's say tomorrow your application becomes very famous and there are millions of people start uh, accessing it, then you have to obviously scale two instance to maybe a thousand instance, right? And uh, that can be taken care of automatically using auto scaling group. But what we are interested in is something called load balancer, which is basically which basically routes the traffics to uh, incoming traffics to different. Yeah. So if you see this, uh, basically what is this? Is the load balancer attaches to the nodes, the node one and node two, and it should be in, in service. If it says out of service, something is wrong. Or when you start when you create your service, it may take a couple of minutes to. Um, attach these nodes to the load balancer so that way it takes a little, little bit time to uh, get it up and running but if it is running then what you can do is if it is if it shows in service then you can simply go here right get service then copy this link which is basically the external ip with some name here and then go to your browser and then just type this link right now the magic should happen so basically you should see this right then what i can do is i go here say upload i'm just going to click on this and then run transcribe it should transcribe the audio voila this is all kubernetes so easy right so we have our audio we have the transcript right i mean there is nothing complicated here now what you have done is you have managed to create your application and then run that application in kubernetes right so you don't have to uh, manually uh, run or create an instance and 
deploy your uh, service or anything so everything else everything will be taken care by kubernetes or by amazon's eks um, support right so it does auto scaling i mean if you want to add more and more nodes if you want to more and if you want to add more and more parts you can simply do it with just one command right kubectl command if you want to scale use kubectl command if you want to add more more replicas you just create uh, use kubectl command single line and kubernetes will sorry the eks service of the aws for kubernetes will take care of everything so now you have your app up and running so this is a sort of a weird uh, weird looking link right you don't want to give this to people i mean you may want to give this to people because that's what a lot of people do right if they want to show it to some investors or if they want to just show it to some demo to some other product and so on but if you want to deploy it in reality in real life you may you can link this to some other forward this to uh, there are something called ingress uh, rules you can create uh, in in kubernetes so you don't have to use this use this uh, link you can create other links and then this will di redirect there so that is all uh, the kubernetes uh, and uh, deploying speech recognition in kubernetes so for what we have done is we have created a model we have created a, a flask web service then we have uh, created a terrorist application push the docker to some uh, repo and then we are able to now deploy our service in kubernetes so uh, that's it folks uh, uh, so if you have listened to this uh, till the end thank you so much for listening and if you enjoyed this tutorial give a thumbs up and um, thank you see you in next video